Okay, guys, now we're going to talk about ionic nomenclature with polyatomics. We've talked about simple ionics, transition metal ionics. Now we're going to talk about polyatomic ions. Poly means more than one. Atomic means atoms. So this means more than one atoms in an ion. First thing, you're going to still crisscross the charge, but the polyatomic ion will be put into parentheses if there's more than one, if the overall charge must still equal zero, as it does in all of our ionic compounds. First example, we have aluminum nitrate, so our ions. Let's look at our ions. First one, aluminum, right here is in group 13. It has three valence shell electrons. So our first ion is going to be Al. You should know now it is much easier to lose three than gain five. So it's gonna lose three, that's its, that's its charge or its uh, oxidation number. It's plus three, because it's losing three, it's losing negativity. Nitrate, now nitrate, if it ever ends in Ate, that should be a big indicator that you will not find that on the periodic table. You're going to find that on the back of your of your periodic table on your star reference sheet under where it says polyatomic ions. Remember, poly means more than one, atomic means atom. So all of these ions are going to have more than one atom. Remember, ions means it has a charge, which means it has lost or gained electrons. So all of these have a charge, if you notice. Okay, we're gonna look for nitrate. So let's go down here and look, and you will find nitrate right here. It is the NO3 minus. So it is all of these atoms. There's one nitrogen, three oxygens, and the entire thing has a minus one charge. So now we're going to do like we always do in our ionic compounds. We are going to crisscross. So we have an Al with a plus three charge and an NO3 with a minus charge. That minus one is going to go down by the aluminum. And we never put ones. This three is going to go down by the nitrate. Now since there's more than one, we have to put parentheses. So we're gonna put NO3, and then we're going to put the three down there, which means there is one aluminum and there are three nitrates, three of these NO3s. So it looks like one aluminum, and then we have a nitrate over here, and a nitrate over here, and another nitrate down here. So our final formula after we have uh, simplified everything, and this is already simplified, one and three is the lowest that we can go, it will be AlNO3. Three. Okay, so aluminum nitrate looks like AlNO3, three. Next example, we have ammonium phosphate. Ammonium is an ion. You can find it right here. Ammonium is NH4+. Plus. It is the only positively charged polyatomic ion that you will see that you have on your chart here. So just memorize it, ammonium. You're not gonna find it on the periodic table. This entire five atoms here, this one nitrogen and four hydrogens has a plus one charge. Phosphate, it ends in ATE, which means you're not gonna find it on the periodic table. You need to look under your polyatomic ions. Phosphate, right here, is PO4 with a minus three charge. PO4 with a minus three charge. I would like for you guys to go ahead and start putting your polyatomic ions in parentheses. It is not like that on here, but your PO4 actually looks like this. And there's gotta be a three minus there. Sorry, I marked it out. Now let's crisscross. So our metal always comes first. This is not a metal, but it is a positively charged ion. It acts like a metal, so our cation is gonna come first. NH4 with a plus one charge, and PO4 with a minus three charge. That three goes down by the NH4, and since there is more than one, we have to put the parentheses, and this one goes down by the PO4. 
Since there is only one, we do not have to put the parentheses around the PO4. It is okay if you do, but you won't see it like that uh, on a test or uh, any other thing. If there's only one, you don't put the parentheses. So our final formula is NH4, 3, PO4. This is a 3. Next example. Calcium hydroxide. So let's look at our ions. So we're going to look at the periodic table. Calcium is on the periodic table. It is right here. It is in group 2, which means it has two valence shell electrons. It's easier to lose 2 than gain 6. Losing 2, that's its oxidation number. That's its charge, plus 2. Hydroxide. It ends in IDE. And if you remember, a lot of our ides, a lot of our anions, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, they all change the endings to IDEs, but you are not going to find a hydroene or a hyd hydroxygen or anything like that over here. So that should be a big hint to tell you to look on your polyatomic ions chart. Hydroxide is located right here. It has an OH minus charge. So I'm going to put this in parentheses, an OH with a minus one. Okay, let's crisscross. We've got our Ca plus 2, our OH with a minus 1. That minus 1 goes down, or the 1 goes down to calcium, but we never put 1s. This 2 goes down by the hydroxide. Since there is more than 1 on an OH, we have to put the parentheses. So it will be OH and then 2. Our final formula, we cannot simplify the 1 and 2 anymore, so it's simply CaOH2. So the formula for calcium hydroxide is CaOH2. Guys, if you do not put the parentheses here, this is what it will end up looking like. Ca and then OH, and then you put your 2 down here. That is a totally different compound than CaOH2. This has one calcium one oxygen and two hydrogens. This has one calcium, two oxygens, because there's two, and that means there's two O's and two H's, and there's only one here. This is a totally different compound than each other, so make sure you put your parentheses. Copper to sulfate. This is a transition metal. Copper looks like, copper right here, it looks like Cu. Since it's a transition metal, they give us the uh, Roman numerals. That tells us that it has a plus 2 charge. Copper 2 means that's its, its oxidation number. Sulfate. It ends in an ATE. That's a big indicator right there. You're going to find it on your polyatomic ions chart. Sulfate is right here. SO4 with a minus 2 charge. So SO4. I'm putting parentheses around there with a minus 2 charge. Now we're going to crisscross. So we got Cu plus 2 charge and an SO4 with a minus 2 charge. This 2 is going to go down by the copper. So we've got copper 2. This 2 is going to go down by the sulfate. So we put parentheses and we do SO4 with a 2. Now, since this is an ionic compound, we need to simplify. 2 and 2 have a common denominator of 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and we never put our 1s. So we're just going to leave it at Cu with no 1s. SO4, we're going to leave as SO4. This 2 divided by 2 is 1. And since we only have 1 SO4, we do not need to put the parentheses. So the formula for copper 2 sulfate is CuSO4. Last example, we have zinc chlorate. Zinc is right here, Zn, okay? Now it is a transition metal, and if you remember back to the very first video that you watched, there are three transition metals where their oxidation numbers never change and it happens to be these three right here and you can remember them by or you can just remember their their oxidation numbers by the same way we remember all these others 
Silver will have a one oxidation number, plus one. Zinc and cadmium always have two. So these are the ones that do not have to have the Roman numerals behind them. So zinc has a two plus two oxidation number. Now we need to look for chlorate. It ends in ATE, that's a big indicator. It's not on the periodic table. You're gonna find that on your uh, polyatomic chart. Chlorate is right here. It is ClO3 minus. ClO3 with a minus. I'm putting parentheses around it. It has a minus one charge. So all four of these atoms bonded together has a charge of minus one. So now let's crisscross. So we're gonna do Zn, two plus, and we're gonna put our polyatomic in parentheses with a minus one. That one goes down by the zinc, and remember we never put ones. This two goes down by the ClO3. Since there's more than one ClO3, one more than one chlorate polyatomic, we have to put parentheses. So it's ClO3, two. And that is our final formula. Zn, ClO3, two for zinc chlorate. <laughs>